Hello, I am Vincent Ko from De La Salle University, presenting my paper, A Shared Intellect, a Rawlsian Analysis of COVID-19 Vaccine Patent Protections. So to start off this presentation, I would like to discuss the flow of this presentation. So I'll start with the introduction and second, the Rawlsian framework. The third is the problem of global justice. The fourth is the cosmopolitanism as a solution to the problem of global justice, because the Rawlsian framework can't apply unless we discuss the limitations and how to solve those limitations. The fifth would be the application of the framework, which discusses whether vaccine patent protections are just and unjust. And sixth would be concluding remarks. With that, we can start with the introduction, discussing the debate locally and the debate internationally and the past debate. With that, the explicit demands, or rather the suggestions of the Philippine government regarding the vaccine patent protection debate and whether it should be waived is the claim that yes, it should be waived for these reasons. The first is waiving the patent protection is a global solution to a global problem. The second is that the Philippines is heavily reliant on imports to secure the vaccine and have no manufacturing capacity of their own. And third, if we're able to manufacture our own vaccines, if vaccine patent protections are waived, this will therefore increase supply, which will be for the good of all. And with that, there are other countries who also have similar ideas and similar arguments in favor of waiving vaccine patent protections, specifically South Africa, along with other Asia and ASEAN countries. With that, this debate is not a new one. The debate regarding health and what we owe to one another is an old debate which started in South Africa. So effectively, a decade prior, there was a debate on whether we should lift patent protections for antiretroviral drugs or at least have flexibilities in terms of intellectual property to ensure that these medicines are freely accessible to all. So a basic resolution for this debate would just be to say that it was in favor of waiving these restrictions or at least having policies like compulsory so compulsory licensing, which allows for patented material to be given to companies to create the medicines without the need of a patent or let's say non-government organizations to create the medicine without the need of a patent to ensure that prices go down and to ensure that more people have access to these drugs. So this was in favor of these composers of these flexibilities to ensure that more people have access. So that's the debate prior, and this is the debate now on whether it should be waived or whether it should not be waived. And with that, I argue that it should be waived based on this specific framework, which is the Rawlsian framework. So this is the framework of the philosopher John Rawls, and this is the basic summary for the purposes of these presentations. So effectively, the um, argument of John Rawls is systematic in nature, which first discussed that we should distribute agreed upon primary goods. There are two criteria for what is considered a primary good. The first is it allows for individuals to acquire a sense of justice. And second, it allows people to decide what life means for them. So I argue that health is a primary good as it fulfills the two criterion and vaccines are a way to access health and therefore is a primary good which must be distributed equally. So it does fit the basic criterion for what we should distribute in the most equitable manner. With that, there are two principles of justice on how we distribute. The first is that each person has an equal right to the most extensive basic liberty compatible with a similar liberty for others. And second, these are to be attached to offices and positions under conditions of fair equality of opportunity. And if inequality is unavoidable, then it must benefit all. That is a very crucial premise of this argument. With that, in distribution, we must also work under a veil of ignorance, which means that 
when we decide who to distribute to, we do not know class, skill, social status, but we do know basic human facts, such as psychology, such as people would prefer to be full as opposed to hungry. So those basic things in terms of what we want to distribute and who we distribute to. And with that, there are some problems in applying this framework globally in terms of this debate on vaccine patent protections. There are two that I pinpoint in the literature. The first is sovereignty claims, which is state borders. So effectively, each country has their own plurality of views, has their own cultures, and they are sovereign nations which cannot be forced or obligated to care for other nations. The problem of global justice is extremely important here because the patent debate is also a debate about whether the developed countries have an obligation to developing countries because the majority of the patents for the most popular brands of vaccines are under developed countries such as the US, for example. So they're the ones that are holding the cards on whether the patent should be waived. And the second is the idea of social contracts and reciprocal obligations. The premise of this argument is to claim that countries only have an obligation to their own citizens and the citizens only have an obligation to their countries to follow their rules and regulations. And because of that restriction, there's a reciprocal obligation for the state to the people to ensure that they must be taken care of. And it's limited to national borders only. And with that, I will discuss the uh, limitations of Rawls himself. So this is the problem of global justice, it's just general limitations. But Rawls claims that there are even more limitations in his own framework, in his works, The Law of Peoples. So the argument is essentially as follows. So the Rawlsian principles of justice only apply to countries that fit the criteria as reasonable peoples. This is a word he coined. And with that, the second premise is that reasonable peoples are assumed to function under free market and liberal principles, so effectively democracies. The conclusion to this argument would be, therefore, the principles of justice cannot apply to all countries, but only to a select few who fit the criterion. So it's also limited in its scope and application. So with that, I reject the limitations by claiming that cosmopolitanism is the solution to the problem of global justice. And here are the reasons why. So according to Thomas Pogge, where one is born is largely arbitrary. So remember the veil of ignorance claims that when you want to distribute, we should not adhere to arbitrary factors such as race and gender. So an extension of this would be that where one is born is also as equally arbitrary as where one is born in, uh, what social status one is born in, what race they are born in, and therefore under the veil of ignorance, we should not also include where one is born and therefore we should seek to distribute it equally regardless of the country. The second is, is that it is not states that should be the idea of moral concern, but rather individuals who will be the direct benefactor of what we distribute, which means that one, the limitations do no longer apply, and two, even if the limitations do apply, what's more important are individuals who benefit and not sovereign ideas, just uh, states, for example, and should be individuals. With that, the specific formulation of cosmopolitanism that I would advocate for is also claimed by Thomas Pogge when he discusses social justice cosmopolitanism, which also has obligations such as one, the positive obligation to do good because institutions are the ones generally perpetrating this inequality and the and the ones having the ability to stop this inequality. And second, there's, there's also a negative obligation to do no harm also on institutions and also individuals to ensure that they check institutions as much as possible. With that, the question now becomes, given my framework, is lifting patent protections just or unjust? With that, uh, we can now finally move on to the application. Given my revised framework, I argue that patent protections are unjust for three distinct reasons. The first reason is that 
patent protection seeks to exclude as an incompatible with the principles of justice. It does not allow for a fair equality of opportunity because the patent system inherently allows rich corporations to decide who they can sell their goods to. And this is extremely harmful if the goods are things such as health, which again should be available to all based on the principles of justice and vaccines are a way to um, access that health. And since corporations hold the patents for the vaccines, they may be allowed to bar people from accessing health because they hold the patent. The second thing with to claim is that the corporations that may lose from lifting patent protections, such as Pfizer and Moderna, already have a sales revenue of $26 billion and $18 billion respectively for 2021 only, and the figures only rise with 2022. And with that, if there is inequality for these corporations, it's a fair inequality just on the basis that um, they would already benefit from it anyway. The third is that this inequality benefits all because herd immunity would cease the pandemic in a much faster rate and therefore would save more live, uh, lives on net. With that, there are, my revised framework also does three key things. The first is because there's now a positive obligation for people to uphold certain laws which allows for fair equality of opportunity and distribution, such as the Universally Accessible Cheaper and Quality Medicines Act, which ensures that these local institutions don't bar people from getting medicines by, let's say, capping prices at a certain amount, for example, and not allow like malicious practices for patent protections to ensue such that people are unable to access these medicines. So there's a positive obligation to do good by upholding these laws and a negative obligation to do no harm by let's say uh, ha letting lob lobbyists stop these laws. The second is on a global scale, given that there is now states have a positive obligation to ensure that they also follow on agreed values that they agreed upon based on the Universal Universal Declaration of Human Rights, for example, and the International Covenant on Economic and Social Rights, it is now clear that even wealthier countries have an obligation for to donate to waive patent protections for developing countries based on the obligation that they already agreed to. So a positive obligation to do good based on what they agreed upon and a negative obligation to do no harm by not waiving patent protections, for example. So this is what social cost, justice cosmopolitanism entails, regardless of whether there is a reciprocal obligation or not. And with that, I would just like to conclude by claiming that one, uh, Rawls is best extended to talk about global justice. So the expansion of the theory and the revision, as I claimed, is much better when discussing this debate. And second, using this framework, using this revised framework, vaccine patent protections is unjust. And with that, these are my references. And thank you for listening.